<clears throat> to the best of your knowledge, has a decision on Brad Richards been made? No. Uh, we met uh, yesterday for the first time with uh, our scouts. Uh, we're going through the process of uh, evaluating our team. Uh, we've obviously, everybody knows we've got quite a few decisions to make. And uh, we're just, in the, just starting that process now, so we still got quite a, quite a bit of work to do. When you look at the, these the last few games, do you think that it's more of what you didn't do as a team that the result turned out that way, or is it personnel issues that need more adjusting this point? Um, you know, I, I think we really put our, our best foot forward. Um, and, you know, for me, it's my second. It was my second opportunity to compete for the cup. Both were very different. Um, you, could, you might want to believe that going to Game Seven, uh, we were. I was closer then, uh, but if I look at that experience, when we got to Game Seven, I was playing with our seventh, eighth, ninth defenseman on our depth chart, and just one third of a second line, and we had so many injuries. Uh, you know, there wasn't much left in, in our tank, and, and if I look at that series, the three games that we played in Boston, we had no chance. We got blown up all three times. I look at this team here, what this group did. Our best game that we played was the game we lost 3 nothing at home. Every game in their building, we let it, we, we put it out on the ice. We tried our best. We lost in five. It's a tough loss. It's uh, it's going to haunt me and my group for some time now. But I'm hoping that we're going to learn from this, and uh, we as management are are going to work on uh, you know putting a, a good team on the ice. But every year is uh, is different. Uh, next year's team is going to be different, uh, and. Uh, You've got to go through the same process. It's going to be a challenge to make the playoffs, and then you take it one series at a time. Haunt you in what way? Well, I really th thought, I mean, th three games and you know, two of them in double overtime and one of them in overtime, with some of the looks that we've had to score. You know, I will. I firmly believe, like if if we get that done. That fifth game, I know in LA they didn't believe in momentum, but I thought we would have had a little bit of momentum there. But we didn't get it done. So, and when you came in here in June and you were introduced to us, you said you were going to hand all the players a clean slate. And it was up to them to write their story. You happy for the most part with what the guys did for you this season? Uh, you know, we, we I think if, if you look at the overall team and you take players individually, most of them had, without saying career years, had close to their best season. Uh, so from that standpoint, I think, you know, there's a working relationship that's in progress in, in my estimation. Um, should get better as, as years go by. Um, but it's a work in progress. I mean, you know, we've got a good young foundation. We've got a core group that uh, I'd like to see if we can't keep together. But there's limitations to that. There's, you know, there's final financial restrictions, and that come into the process and to the decision making. Uh, but there are some real good people in that dressing room. There's some real quality individuals and. Uh, Hopefully we can uh, do a good job of keeping some of these parts together. Anyone emerged these last few weeks as, as a potential captain, assuming that you, you name a captain for the next season? Or something? Yeah, I get an idea of where I'm leaning, but I'm not going to share that with you today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let training camp unfold. 
or maybe I'll make the decision prior to it. But uh, I'll be, I'm going to talk to uh, management, give them my thoughts on that, and uh, sometime next year we'll, we'll make the announcement. Is that decision up to you guys and the coaching staff in the front office, or do the players have some say in that as well? Um, I would say that um, I will seek uh, feedback from a couple of the players, and I will get everybody that's around our team and has been around our team's input, and uh, pretty sure we'll be real close to a consensus. From, from your perspective, how do you weigh Brad Richards' impact in the room versus his impact on the ice? And do you have to separate, or do they? Is it a, the package? Have no, to be I, together? I think the package is together. And I think if you look at Brad's overall season, he had a real good year. Uh, in the final, in the final series, um, I don't know if it was a combination of some other guys might have been playing a little bit better than he was. But we had some decisions to make in game four and game five. Uh, but his overall play, five on five and on the power play during the year, was, was very good. I'm very happy with what he brought to the table. Uh, veteran player that from day one uh, was a real good extension of the coaching staff in, in that dressing room. Uh, so, I mean, I think he, he should walk away from this season very pleased on how he played and how he contributed to our team. And uh, as everybody knows, I mean, there's decisions to be made. And we haven't made those yet, so we're going to talk and figure it out. All things being equal, I mean, would you be a big fan of him returning to the team? I'm a big fan of Brad Richards. I've said it uh, since day, day one. When I got named last year, the first day I got named, I went to meet him right after. Uh, known Brad from uh, my junior days in PI. He's helped me out with my team over there during the other lockout. And uh, I, he was a classy, classy individual there. So you know, we'll see what happens. In an ideal world, would you like to infuse some young players you have every to. year? You have to. I mean, and just look at LA. I mean, they're. Probably one, if not their most effective line, was the one with the two kids and Carter Pearson. I mean, you've got to bring in some youth. You've got to bring in that, you know, the veterans help them out. They bring in enthusiasm. You, you have to do that every year. And uh, hopefully we're going to have a couple <coughs> of guys pushing at the door, knocking to, to get into our dressing room. Do you think Klein is capable of being a top four defenseman of a full season? Uh, he did that in Nashville. He was a top four defenseman with top four minutes there. Uh, I spoke to him today uh, about a couple of areas that I, I think he needs to focus on. But he has done that in, in the past. And uh, he's got, in my estimation, he has that potential to do it. Brian kind of indicated to us today that going into free agency, one thing he would like, or, or every player would like, is, is a bigger role. But he said that you seem to indicate that if he was with the Rangers, this would be the role he was going to play? Well, you know, players, they all want to play on the power play. They all want to, you know, uh, <clears throat> his role on our team is a very important role. You know, it's first penalty killing. It's We've got a lead. We're sending him out. He had a huge contribution to our team. I would say in my dealings with Brian, he would probably like to have a different role, but his role on our team is a very important role. If, if he's satisfied with having that role, I would definitely want him back. Uh, at the end of the day, players have to decide, you know, if they're satisfied with what with their, what they're being given. But his 12 to 14 minutes a game that he's getting are huge minutes. Are and some players don't see it, but you know they're huge minutes to teams having success. 
and I'm hoping that he sees that. Did you spend any time trying to make him see that or, or convince him of that? I mentioned to that quite a few times to him and, and Dom and Doris and all those guys would like to play the power play and you know get top end minutes and uh, coaches have to make decisions on who they feel uh, should be used in certain ways and our, for our team that's and for us to have success that's the way I felt that those guys needed to be used. Do you have a uh, list of names in case all could use? Do you have guys who you would want to talk to, do you know that at this point? Um, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, when you have a list, should I ask you? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just, uh, I, I didn't, I don't know where we are with that. Yeah. Is we're, we're better we're nowhere officially yet. Okay. So, what's the next step for Chris Kreider? What's the next thing you need to see from him? Like any young player, I mean, uh, <clears throat> everybody sees the skill set. He's got to put it together, pay attention to some of the details of the game, with and without the puck. And, uh, you know, as he gets more experience, uh, he's got a tremendous amount of upside. And uh, I see a real bright future for, for that young man. Since Brad did not come out and talk today, is there any way you can kind of share the emotions or, you know, kind of where he is at? mentally right now with with well, the uncertainty yeah, he was the first player I met this morning and uh, I'd have to say like obviously we're going through the pain of of losing in and putting that in the perspective of at the end of the day we we could say we had a pretty good year anyway yeah. but I mean it's still painful to lose in the Stanley Cup finals. Um, but he's uh, Brad's an experienced guy that uh, knows that you know we've got some decisions to make. They're not easy. I'm looking at different things, and uh, he's he's going to be a pro, and he's going to wait until we make up our mind. He's sixteen of the last seventeen Cup finalists who lost did not make it past the second round the next year. Is there something inherently difficult about this short off season that kind of comes to pass? I, mean, I know you experienced it a couple years ago. Well, the training is obviously a little bit shorter for the players. Um, but I, I can say that coming out of a, a pretty long playoff round, we've come out of it uh, health-wise banged up. But I've seen other teams more banged up than, than what we are, so should be uh, should be all right. So, is there anybody that's going to have to have any repairs? Not that, that, uh, not that I know of either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else? How how would you describe Mike Sorello's? Uh, part and his role in the playoffs, and, and would you comment on him being a restricted free agent at this moment? Well, I um, definitely want uh, Matt to be at training camp next year, so I want him to uh, get his contract issues uh, taken care of. Uh, he was a big part of our team. He um, got off to uh, maybe a, a slow start, but uh, once found a little chemistry with some of his teammates. Uh, he became a big part of our more offensive forwards. Uh, he's a good young man. He's got good instincts. And um, if he continues to progress, uh, he's going to be a real good player for us. Yeah.